Great. Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, this and welcome to the January webinar. Uh, we're going to be discussing how to maintain and enhance board security within Onboard. Uh, your host today will include myself and my colleague, Megan Turner. Megan and I are both customer success managers here at Passageways. Uh, I focus specifically on our education customers, and Megan focuses on our financial institutions. Uh, we also have Tracy and Gabe on today who will be helping us out with the Q&A and chat tools. Uh, so speaking of those tools, uh, I do want to address a quick housekeeping item for our webinar today. Uh, you will, um, should all be muted by default, and if you have any questions, we will ask that you use the Q&A tool uh, at the bottom of your screen, your Zoom screen, uh, that you see, and our team will get back to you and uh, either in that Q&A tool or we'll pass that along to Megan and I to talk about during the webinar uh, or when we open it up to Q&A at the end of the session. Uh, if you are having any technical issues, uh, feel free to use that chat feature or raise your hand. Uh, you can definitely feel free to send questions throughout the Q&A tool, uh, or sorry, throughout the presentation today uh, as you think of those. And um, as you can see, our team is working remotely today uh, and every day right now, as many of you are, I'm sure. Uh, we're not anticipating any connectivity issues here, but uh, we do appreciate your patience and understanding if anything does come up there. All right, I also just want to mention that this call will be recorded and we will be uh, sending it out uh, today as well. All right. So let's just go ahead and jump into our agenda and the topics that we're gonna cover today. We are going to talk through how Onboard was built from the ground up with security in mind. We are gonna talk through some of the features offered within Onboard and share some com uh, compliance resources that you have accessible to you and finish off and wrap that up uh, with a Q&A session. Before we jump in, there are three things I was hoping uh, that you will take away from our call today. Uh, we want to, you to understand how Onboard is actively protecting your data, what security features and tools are available within the Onboard portal, and where you can access, access the compliance resources that we have. Uh, I'm gonna now hand it over to Megan to kick us off with a quick poll question. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us here at the January CSM webinar. So yeah, I want to start things by taking your pulse uh, just a little bit to see how confident you're feeling about security within Onboard. So you should have just seen a poll question pop up in front of you. We're just going to give you 30, 30 seconds to a minute to uh, answer this question for us. Um, yeah, because we really want to address these confidence levels as we go through our presentation here today. Only a few more seconds. Get your answers in. Nice. All right, it looks like we've wrapped things up. It looks like most of you are pretty confident, um, you know, sitting in the confident to very confident area. Some folks are somewhat confident. Um, so we're hopeful that, you know, regardless of your confidence levels, you're going to leave this presentation today feeling even more confident about our security levels within Onboard and knowing how to access uh, some of the tools that we have available for you. So uh, with that, we're going to dive right into how um, Onboard is designed with security in mind. Um, so Dean's going to take us through some of the features here in a moment that you have control of, the things that you can enable within your onboard organization. But I wanted to take a minute and talk about some of the invisible things that are kind of happening behind the scenes at onboard um, that ensure that we are actively uh, protecting your data at all times. So um, that really starts with the architecture of our entire system. So security has to be um, you know, built from the ground up. It has to be interwoven um, within the architecture of the system. So uh, keeping with the architecture metaphor, the server environment that you select is really the foundation. Um, and we went with Microsoft Azure just because it has the most security features already built in. It does represent a pretty big investment for our company, but we thought that investment was definitely worth it um, because it just allows us to put as many layers as possible between um, you know, the open internet and where our information is stored. So we've got firewalls in place. We have a lot of monitoring um, in place as well, um, intrusion detection, um, all kinds of 
um, you know, fabulous features. I know that's kind of a lot of jargon to throw at you. I think we probably have kind of a, a mixed audience um, on the call today between IT pros and um, some more administrative folks. So I'm trying, trying to keep things high level, but basically what you need to know about that is that we put many layers of security, um, you know, between your information and the internet using that secure server environment. Um, one of those layers that I wanna to talk to you about specifically is encryption. Um, so encryption is the process of masking or rendering your data unreadable to someone who doesn't have the key um, to basically uh, decode that data. So there are two times that we use encryption kind of in our process. So we use encryption during transit and we use encryption during um, when data is at rest. So I, I think an example best illustrates this for us. So um, say that you're in your directory and onboard and you want to create a new user. You click on the invite user button and you enter somebody's name and email address. It's kind of sensitive information, right? Um, you hit submit on there and the information that you've entered has to move between your computer and onboards secure servers. Um, so while that data is in transit, it is encrypted. Uh, so if somebody, you know, worst case scenario, was able to grab that packet of data as it was making your way from the computer to our secure servers, um, they wouldn't be able to read it. It would kind of look like gibberish to them or that information would be masked because they don't have the key um, to decode that information. So, so that um, is one step that we take uh, to make sure that that is protected in transit. Um, and then once it gets to our servers, we need to store that information for you so that you can retrieve it later. Next time you visit your directory, um, we'll have that new user listed there for you because it's stored in our system now. Um, but we also want to make sure that while it's stored in our system, it is also encrypted there as well and it uses a different form of encryption. Um, so again, like worst case scenario, somebody gets past all of the layers that we have, the firewalls and all the security systems that we have in place to prevent anybody from accessing uh, those areas that should not. Um, we, they wouldn't, they wouldn't necessarily just get your Data, they would get what kind of looks like an Excel spreadsheet with gibberish in it because they don't have the keys to unlock that data. So, um, so yeah, those are two ways that we kind of protect against worst case scenarios there. I also wanted to talk to you about the principle of least privilege. This is how we designed our permission system within Onboard. So I'm sure you've had the experience in other software uh, platforms where if you are an administrator, you have access to every single thing um, within your account. And I'm sure that if you are an Onboard admin, you've noticed that that is not necessarily the case um, with Onboard. So um, you can see many things, all of the things that you create as an administrator, but if you have another administrator in your platform, for example, and they create a meeting, within Onboard, if they don't invite you to that meeting, you can't see it. Um, or if they don't invite you to that resource, you can't see it. And while that may feel inconvenient at times, that's actually done on purpose to prevent internal data breaches. So when we talk about data breaches, I think we tend to think about external bad actors accessing our data. And we have many protections in place to prevent that. But what we also wanna prevent is somebody within your organization um, accessing, uh, viewing, or editing data that they should not have. Um, so the principle of least privilege states that a person has the least amount of access possible to be able to do their job. So that's why our system is set up the way it is. It really gives you control over who can see what documents and information within Onboard. So, so that's why our uh, permission system is set up the way that it is. And then Dean's going to go into a little bit more about how um, you can take advantage of some of those settings here momentarily. Uh, the last point I wanted to make here was that one of the things that we did with our Accelerate release, that was that big release that we did back in November of last year, um, with all the new kind of design updates and stuff, uh, kind of an invisible update or something that took place in our back end was bringing our code framework, um, updating our code framework, I should say, um, to take the opportunity to proactively um, uh, put in place the security enhancements that the developers of that code framework have um, released recently. So nothing really wrong with the old framework. We just like to bring ourselves up to modern standards whenever possible. So, um, so yeah, that's just an important part of staying secure in the software development process. So with all that in mind, I want to highlight two more points here about some of our mobile specific security 
security features. Uh, so pretty much everything that we just talked about also applies to mobile apps as well. Uh, but I do want to highlight you know, two different ways that we take advantage of some of the um, some of the things that are specific to mobile devices. So uh, identity verification is one of those things. So as you know, you can you know, use biometric data, uh, you know, those face scans or fingerprints um, with mobile devices. So we wanted to take advantage of, of that security feature when we were creating the onboard app. Um, so you've noticed that you log in to your onboard app kind of the first time that you open it up, but then it also gives you the option to trust the device. You don't have to trust the device. It just means you're going to log in with your username and password every single time that you get into onboard. If you do trust the device, you still have to provide um, biometric data or a pin to get back into onboard. So if you, you've noticed probably that if you navigate away from onboard and then come back, you do have to provide that pin even though you've trusted it, um, trusted the device previously. Uh, so that is because we don't want anyone, you know, who happens to pick up your device uh, and, uh, you know, takes it from you, or steals it, or even um, doesn't necessarily have a malicious intent, but picks it up and sees that it's open and just sees documents open on your screen. We don't want that to happen. Um, so if you navigate out of onboard or lock your device, we do make you um, confirm with that pin again or biometric data that you should have access to onboard. So it's a little less of a hassle, I think, than entering your username and password again, which is why we're um, you know, doing this, but we definitely want to make sure that's secure. So another thing that we do also is masking. So on um, particularly on iPhones and iPads, uh, you have that view where you can actually see multiple um, all the apps that you have open, right? That's how you close your applications there. Um, we don't want somebody viewing that screen to be able to see the last thing that you were looking at in Onboard, right? Because it gives you like a tiny tile view of you know the last page that you saw on most applications. What we do is we actually put a white blank page over that when you're in that multiple app viewer, just has the Onboard logo on it. So somebody can't um, accidentally or on purpose um, view your the last page that you were seeing in Onboard there. So yeah, uh, those are just some of the things that we're doing. Uh, those are the things that I really wanted to highlight for you. Dean is going to take it away with a couple of security best practices for your organization and how to use some of the features that we've just talked about. Yeah, thanks, Megan. So before I jump into those different features um, on in Onboard uh, that will assist with better security, I just wanted to run through some basic security best practices here. Uh, these are all things that you've heard before, uh, but I think it's worth mentioning uh, them before I move on. So these include uh, locking your screen on your computer or your mobile device uh, before sitting it down or walking away from it. Uh, this will just help prevent anyone from navigating to your Onboard uh, you know, in, on your device without you knowing. Uh, of course, keeping your password private and making it different from other passwords that you use will also help uh, as just kind of a general best practice. Uh, make sure you're setting a passcode on your actual device as well um, or on your computer, uh, just so that way you have to actually log into that before logging into Onboard. That's just another layer of protection that you can uh, use. So along with that, make sure that you don't allow users to share accounts within Onboard. Uh, each user should have their own credentials, and this just helps you know exactly who is accessing the information uh, that you have stored within the Onboard portal. Uh, also making sure that you only give permissions to those who need it, uh, kind of like Megan was talking about, and I'm going to dive into some more advanced permissions here uh, in just a moment. Uh, using the app security that Onboard offers, another thing that I'll be covering in more detail uh, in this presentation today. Uh, but then last but not least is just using common sense. Um, if you're unsure of how something works uh, or you want clarification uh, from our side, just reach out to your customer success manager. Um, and then of course, above all else, make sure that you follow the guidance uh, that your specific IT team has given uh, or any institutional requirements that you may have. So the first Onboard feature that I want to cover, it, Pertains, uh, pertaining to security is our permissions. So permissions are important because it restricts the access uh, to various items within Onboard. So only the information uh, that you want to be accessible um, to individuals have been granted specifically to them. 
as many of you know, permissions are set throughout Onboard and uh, they are just different in each of the different tools. So uh, for example, the directory has members, creators, and admins where a meeting has readers, contributors, and admins. I'm not gonna go into all those permissions today, but I do wanna mention a couple of places uh, where you can drill down and set some more advanced permissions. Uh, so in the meeting, you have the ability to set overall meeting permissions. Uh, that's for the overall meeting, uh, but you can also drill down to a specific agenda section level and increase or remove permission to that specific section. Uh, for example, you can make someone a reader of the overall meeting, but a contributor of one or two sections. This would only give that user access to modify or add documents to those sections versus modifying the overall meeting agenda. On the flip side of that, you could also exclude someone from an agenda section that contained confidential information and maybe not everyone in the meeting needs to see. And you can, again, exclude them at the specific section level versus that overall meeting. Uh, another place uh, that you can set overall uh, permissions differently, um, or sorry, the individual permissions differently than overall would be in the resources. So uh, you can set the overall folder permission that carries to all of your subfolders and documents by default, uh, but you have the option to modify uh, the permission for a folder or a document within that parent folder. Uh, we do have training resources available to explain all of our permissions, uh, but if you ever have questions, we always just advise that you consult your customer success manager or implementation manager that you're working with just to ensure you are setting everything up correctly uh, since it is such a big con uh, contributor to the security and confidential, uh, confidentiality you have within Onboard. Uh, another feature we offer as part of our collaboration suite or a la carte uh, is the secure messenger tool. Uh, this tool allows you to send secure messages and links to individuals, uh, multiple people, or the pre-created groups that you have as part of Onboard. Uh, in today's world, there's a lot of security concerns and phishing attempts uh, that happen with sending emails back and forth. Uh, so the messenger is a, just a tool uh, that's a secure way to communicate within your password protected onboard portal. Uh, this also keeps onboard as your central hub for everything board related, which is always the goal. Uh, and if you do not view the message within onboard, because let's face it, we're not all in there all day long, uh, the, we will email you uh, 15 minutes later and uh, you'll be sent an email saying that you have unread messages and that you'll have to log in to view those. Uh, the reason for that uh, little delay is just so you're not getting emailed with every single message that comes through, uh, especially in a group chat scenario where maybe there's a lot of messages going on. Uh, we don't wanna bombard your inbox, so it just makes it a little easier there. Uh, if you do have the mobile app installed, uh, you'll also be notified on your device. Uh, and on your slide here, you can see an example of the email notification you'll receive, as well as some of the back and forth messages and how those look on your mobile device. All right, the next uh, feature I wanna just cover is uh, remote wipe. Uh, I'm sure this would never happen to any of you, but in the event that a mobile device is lost, falls into the wrong hands, or just should no longer be used by an individual uh, user, Onboard provides the ability to perform a remote wipe of that user's devices. Uh, the remote wipe basically issues a command to the device, uh, which immediately signs out the user and erases all of their onboard data. Uh, now, uh, if the device is found or recovered, it's not a big deal. Uh, the user simply has to log back in uh, to the app with their credentials and everything will be reverted back to normal. Uh, it's basically just logging them out and erasing anything stored on the device. Um, but again, logging back in with the credentials kind of just recovers all of that if um, you know it was done in error or they recover the device. Uh, they don't lose anything. Uh, it just requires them, again, to sign back in. Uh, this remote wipe will happen automatically uh, for you whenever a user is deleted or de deactivated from the directory. Uh, so that's the only time it really happens automatically. Uh, the way you manually remote wipe uh, one of your or board members' devices is just going to your directory and clicking the three dot menu next to their name, and then you'll have the option to select wipe devices remotely from there. All right. Uh, the last feature I want to cover with you and review is uh, found in the dashboard tab under organization info. Uh, there are two security settings in there that you will have the option to enable or disable. Uh, the first one is enabling app security. Since mobile devices allow users to remember me or trust this device like Megan was talking about, 
after they sign in, this ensures that anyone who logs into Onboard through a mobile application will be required to use an additional security me method, uh, such as fingerprint, racial, uh, a facial recognition, uh, some of those biometric options, or a PIN number each time they come back into the app. Uh, the other security settings you can require is two-factor authentication. Uh, this is one step farther that requires the board members to authenticate using a secondary code that gets delivered to them by email or text message, uh, in addition to their normal sign-in process. Uh, both of these security settings can have uh, specific users excluded if you do want to set some exceptions, um, but otherwise they would be required uh, for every user when you set them up at the org level. Uh, now, beneath the security settings under that organization info tab, uh, there are also some feature settings that you have the ability to disable. Uh, one of those that I just want to mention include document downloads. So disabling document downloads at the organization level uh, under that organization info tab means that you no, no one in the organization can download a document throughout the product, uh, again, unless you set those specific exceptions. Uh, you also can do this um, leave it on at the org level, but then turn it on at a meeting level. So if there's individual meetings that you don't want them to be able to download documents for, you do have the ability to do it at that meeting level, but leave it on uh, for the organization overall. Uh, so those are just a few of our security features and settings within Onboard. So I'm gonna pass it back to Megan just to walk you through some of our certifications and compliance resources. Thanks, Dean. That was an awesome overview. Much appreciated. Um, so I do want to take you all through a couple of the accreditations and certifications that we have to get. Um, we get these uh, primarily as a way for us to test our own systems to make sure that you know, the way that we are um, going about physical, virtual, um, and um, creating our security policies is up with the most modern standards. Um, we also know that a lot of you require these certifications from us as well through your vendor management processes. So, so we want to provide these to you. Um, so I'll explain a little bit more about each one of these, and then I'm going to take you through how to find all the documentation that we have um, about these accreditations and certifications that you may need for your vendor management processes. So um, first up is SOC 2. Um, that is one that is uh, basically for companies in the United States to go through. It's a pretty intensive process. They're looking at five different trust principles when they go through that with us. Um, so it's privacy, confidentiality, processing, integrity, availability, and security. Um, so we have third party auditors that come in to help us go through that process. And we really review, um, like I said before, our physical virtual um, security as well as our security policies um, with a fine tooth comb with them. Um, we've recently gone through the process to get recertified with them. That happened uh, just, I believe it was November of last year. So we've got documentation uh, available for you now on our most recent certification. Again, I'll show you where to find that in just a moment. Uh, we also go through the ISO certification process. So that one's more of an international standard for information security management. Um, so the International Organization for Standards is what ISO stands for. It's slightly backwards there, but um, but yeah, 165 different international certifying bodies actually put these together. So helps us make sure that we are maintaining compliance on a global scale as well as a national scale with SOC 2. Um, GDPR is the General Data Protection Regulation. This is just put in place by the EU. I don't think I have too many EU customers on the line with us here today, um, but uh, important for us to stay up with this relatively new standard. Um, they put it in place to really protect uh, the personally identifiable information that EU citizens might be sharing with corporations. It gives them more control over uh, how their data is used and processed and shared. So all good things there. Um, and lastly, we are HIPAA compliant for all you medical organizations out there uh, who might need to be sharing any sensitive patient related data uh, within your uh, meetings. We do have that HIPAA compliance available. Uh, so I was talking about some of the ways that you might be able to access some of this documentation. We have an online resource for you called the Trust Center. Um, we wanted to make it really easy for you all to go through your vendor management processes because with the verticals that we all work in, uh, we know that you also have to go through audits. I work with a lot of credit unions and banks and you know, you have 
state regulators and federal regulators and people that need access um, to your documents to certify you. So um, all of that, everything that you need should be available for you in the trust center. Um, so you can always contact your CSM uh, to get set up with that um, if you haven't been set up with access already. Um, we do need you to sign off on a mutual non-disclosure agreement when we do that, just because the trust center contains some sensitive data. Um, so your CSM can get you that MNDA and uh, get you access and we'll set you up with credentials for the trust center. If you already have access, but for some reason couldn't remember where to find that, it's trustcenter.passageways.com. Um, we also wanted to share a quick pro tip with you about audits. We know, like I said before, that a lot of you have to go through an audit process at least annually. Um, so we've encountered some customers who actually just go ahead and give their auditors access, temporary access to their onboard organization. And they use those advanced permissions that we've been talking about to make sure that auditors are only getting access uh, to the things that they need. So you can give them access to these specific meetings or any documentation that you have stored within your resource. I know uh, from the people that I've talked to that that really streamlines the process. So again, this is a great thing to reach out to your CSM about uh, if you need any assistance with this, we're always happy to help. Um, also wanted to let you know that we have tools available to assist you with open meeting laws if these apply to you. Uh, it tends to be uh, applied to government organizations. They're, they're applied on a state-by-state -state basis, so the rules can, can vary. But basically, uh, any organizations that must um, discuss their board information in a public setting. Uh, so uh, these um, these laws basically say that you know your board members can't actually discuss board dealings outside of board meetings. So um, you know some of the groups that we've helped with in the past, we've been able to disable the messenger feature for them, right, so that people don't have the option to chat with and onboard between meetings, um, or disable that shared annotations feature. Also, a feature that we have for this as well as a public posting feature. This feature is not on by default. We would need to enable it for you. So any organizations that don't need to post anything publicly know that that's not happening. Um, but if you would like to post any of your meeting information publicly, we do have a feature for that. So reach out to your CSM um, and chat with them about that if that's something that applies to you. Uh, lastly here, I just wanted to uh, remind everybody, I think you've probably asked if this affects you, but um, we had a lot of requests in recently asking us if we have ever used SolarWinds Orion, uh, just because they had a very large data breach here in the last couple of months. We do not use any SolarWinds or Orion products. We did get a list of the um, IPs that were involved in the attack, and we've started to actively monitor for those, but that's really just a precaution. We were not involved in the data breach there. So, um, so yeah. Uh, I think that we're about to wrap things up here with one poll question. So our product team is considering a few security-oriented security features for Onboard. We've got a list of them here. If you wouldn't mind um, just telling us which one or two um, you might be interested in seeing uh, Onboard release here in the future, we'd appreciate it. And while you're voting on that, I do want to highlight as well that regardless of the style of feature we're releasing at Onboard, um, we are always keeping security in mind. Um, that um, we, we are thinking about how this new feature um, will go into our permission system. Um, and we're thinking about how um, to build this framework in a secure way for to support this new feature. So, so just wanted you all to be aware of that. Even if the feature itself is not security oriented, it is a secure feature. How are we doing, Dean? Oh, we have about 60% uh, voted so far. So maybe we'll just give it another 15 seconds here. Cool. Good. Lots of engagement. We're all very excited about uh, these possible new features as well. So thanks for sharing. Yes. All right. I'm going to share those out. Yeah, enhanced approvals for sure. That uh, I think that a lot of the CSM team uh, is on board with that. We would be really excited to see some enhanced approval features too. Um, but it looks like most, uh, almost everything would be, would everyone would be excited about. So terms and roles management as well, as well as uh, enhanced calendar integrations. Cool. We're definitely going to share this with our product team, everybody. Thanks so much. Really appreciate your feedback. All 
All right, with that, so uh, just to review those takeaways again, so I hope that you're leaving this presentation today uh, knowing a little bit more about how Onboard is actively protecting your data with some of those features that I talked about at the beginning, uh, how to enable some of those security features that are available for you to control within your onboard organization, and where to access those compliance resources, um, and how to reach out to your CSM to get access to the Trust Center. So with that, I think we're going to go ahead and open it up for questions. We've got Tracy and Gabe on the line with us, and not, they've been managing the Q&A for us. So. Any questions for us? Hi, Megan. Um, so I, we've kind of been answering uh, as we've been going, uh, I guess maybe just kind of like a, a quick little update on some of these items as they may pertain to, to everyone involved here. Uh, I know that one person had asked, uh, and this is usually a common question with webinars in regards to whether the presentation will be sent afterwards. So um, it, it, does, it does usually take us a, a couple days to get um, kind of everything tabulated and um, you know kind of confirm all the registrants and everything there so just bear with us in regards to that timing uh, but yes it is always a uh, common policy for us to send out um, an email message then with a um, uh, with the recording uh, of the webinar um, for you all to to keep if for any reason uh, let's say after a week or so that you don't see anything in your inbox related to that don't hesitate to reach out to your onboard CSM and always uh, you can request for that kind of information. If there's ever anything that you feel like you need a copy of, uh, just ask your, your CSM to track that down for you and they'll be happy to do it. Uh, I know there's, there's kind of just some general questions, uh, maybe clarifying some things, you know, in terms of what data is encrypted, um, kind of talking about all info within onboard. Um, also on a topic of uh, remote device wipes, um, as that was brought up, I believe by Dean earlier, um, so just kind of referring to a knowledge base article and, and a lot of these features are always going to have a, a knowledge base article, knowledge base article in our help section too. if you ever want any kind of further clarification on some of these points. Um, and then Kathy, uh, Kami just want to also confirm that I did submit your product feature request to our products team while the webinar is going on. So uh, that really kind of wraps up, although I think one just came in. So I'll go ahead and um, pose this to the group now. Uh, but Jill is asking, does using the Zoom option on board create any security risk? Um, so Dean or Megan, do you wanna address that at all then on today's session? Sure, and we can connect with you after this, uh, Jill, if you ha you know, to give you some more information if you'd like, but basically using the Zoom integration within Onboard uh, does automatically add a password. So a lot of uh, concerns that have come about with uh, using Zoom and that platform being secure uh, really come around uh, comes around the idea that the meeting wouldn't be password protected and that anyone could then just join in on your meeting. Uh, so since the integration automatically adds a password, uh, that's not really, that specifically is not a concern. Uh, there, you know, when you use that and set it up through Onboard, um, the automatic one, when you click join Zoom from within the platform, will just automatically account for that password and uh, they can get right in from there. If you were to go and join uh, separately just through your browser, you would have to enter that password to be able to join. So if that uh, is, is not quite answer the question, again, please reach out to us. Yeah, and I think that's a great example too of one of the ways that our development team really tries to integrate security features, right? Because when we launched that Zoom release, that was not something that Zoom was even making available to us. And so as they addressed some of the security issues with their platform, they did then make that, that feature available and our team really quickly got that integrated within to onboard. So we try to be very responsive um, to any of those security requests. And we did just get another one, um, actually uh, pretty much the same question echoed by both uh, Denise and Penelope. So we'll, we'll kind of address that and I can kind of give it uh, a first go. The question basically is just, will there be any other uh, kind of web conferencing tools uh, besides Zoom um, that will have um, an integration um, with, with Onboard? Um, so examples given something like WebEx or like a GoToMeeting or probably like a Microsoft Teams. Um, and, you know, while none of us here are fortune tellers or, or have heard anything from Product Team that would indicate uh, definitively on this, um, I, I would say that, you know, we certainly uh, did a lot of investigations and research um, in regards to what what kind of application to be used. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there was a multitude of factors that went into making Zoom kind of the ideal candidate at the time when we released this, which was which pretty much um, right at the, the, the 
beginning of the pandemic last year when we saw that remote meetings were going to become uh, more and more common. Um, nothing about the integration, um, you know, in terms of if you want to have onboard and Zoom seamlessly on one screen, that's really what that integration is ideal for, uh, but nothing uh, about then using onboard in tandem with any other web conferencing tool like WebEx or GoToMeeting uh, or Microsoft Teams can prevent you from doing so. You would just probably need to do it to where you're creating that meeting first, um, you know, through that particular uh, application, um, and then you might have then you know one screen up with that that tool like like again like WebEx, and then the other screen would be onboard. Uh, but at this time, um, we have received no indication that there's going to be another integrated uh, kind of seamless with onboard and another web copy tool all in the same place. So, uh, but I do appreciate both of those questions there. Um, and just to echo what Gabe said there, um, you can add your WebEx or go to meeting links within the remote mm -hmm. meeting details of the calendar uh, to actually provide that information to your board members. It's just not uh, an integration within Onboard, just a place to add those details. Uh, and then if you do have certain platforms that you would like to see uh, that we integrate, uh, feel free to submit that to our tech support team or your customer success manager uh, as a feature re uh, enhancement request. And that's definitely something we will consider. Definitely. Great, great, great uh, clarifying point there, Dean. Appreciate that. Any other questions? Go ahead and post them now. And that, that may be it for this week, Dean and Megan. Okay. Yeah, great job you. on the presentation, though. Yeah, thank thanks, you. Dave. Thanks, Megan. Great job. Um, if we uh, don't have any other further uh, further questions there, we will just go ahead and end the webinar today. Thanks so much, everyone, for joining us. Uh, we will get the recording out to you, as we mentioned, and just hope that you reach out with any additional questions that you may have. Uh, but other than that, have a great rest of your day. Thank you.